The birth of the Story Project started when my longtime friend and manager, Norman Miller, um, called me and asked if I'd be interested in doing some songwriting for a project that he was working on. He told me a little about Max Licato and Randy Frazee's um, books that were inspiring the music and um, just, just wanted to see if I was interested and of course I was very interested. So after doing some of that reading and research, I just picked up a pen one day and said, here we go, here we go. And I, and I wrote the Mary song first. That was the first song I wrote was um, uh, Be Born In Me. And I think it's still my favorite. <laughs> It was always very intentional to write from the first person, from the beginning, um, because we wanted to give these characters a modern voice and to try and connect some dots from their lives to our lives. So uh, it didn't feel right to just retell the story um, as, as a narrator voice and, in, you know, and set it to music. I, don't, I didn't think that was necessary because we have the story in scripture and we have some incredible insight in these writings from Max and Randy and the music needed to go someplace more deep and emotional and um, just really allow the listener, this is our hope anyway, allow the listener to just kind of crawl inside the life and the mind and the heart of the character and identify, good or bad, identify with kind of the journey that they have walked. Writing the song Alive for Natalie Grant was probably the hardest song I've ever had to write in the history of all time, all songs. And really at the end of the day, I was overthinking it. I was trying to place her at the tomb and have some theological, deep, introspective aha moment. And the truth is, she was stunned and breathless. And Bernie finally said, why don't we just say, alive, you're alive. And I just thought, well, that is too simple. It can't be that simple. And it is that simple. She was bowled over. Is it you? I wish we could do like a whole interview about Bernie Herms. <laughs> I wish I could just talk for an hour about how absurdly gifted he is and what he brought to this record. But as a songwriter, it was a very unique situation. We, um, and we probably could never duplicate it, but we never were in the same room together when we wrote these songs. Uh, we wrote a lot on the phone. We wrote a lot by email. We worked on pieces and parts, you know, just whenever we could catch a few minutes together on the phone is really how it happened. And it just worked. We just felt God's hand all over it. But there's mercy in the soil, mercy in the sun, learning to forget.
I have never worked with Brown before and I've always wanted to, so I was uh, extremely excited when I heard that he was part of the team uh, and came on board. And, and really his role, aside from just being the nicest person on the planet, he is such, uh, he's such an encourager and such an empowerer. He just, he was like a resident shepherd and, and he and Bernie worked so closely together. Um, you know, we just, we just couldn't have done it without Brown's instincts. Every time Bernie and I would get stuck with a lyric or a melody or a direction or anything, always, let's just call Brown. There's an empty cross, there's an empty tomb, fire and wind now sweeping in this tiny upper Some of these stories have just been relegated to Sunday school land a little bit and we just forget how utterly uh, relevant they still are. I really unearthed some things in my own life and in the scripture and in these characters that I was unaware was waiting there for me. And I hope that's what the listener does as well. I hope that it encourages people to go get back in the Word. Dig, dig a little bit deeper and see what God has waiting for you and how it can help write your story. You and me.